Hello, and welcome to another episode of Animaniacs! Hey! Me and Cody at it again with more Nichigo. <laughs> and I did make an effort to try to remember names, so here's my rundown of the names I got so far. Mm -hmm. So we have Mio, the blue hair girl. Yep. Yuko. The dumb girl. Which is our dumb girl. Hatsume, which is the young professor. Mm -hmm. And Nano, which is our robot girl. Yeah. I don't know the quiet girl's name yet. Yeah. And this will cover episodes seven, eight, and nine. Which <laughs> seven starts off. I thought we didn't have the right anime for a bit there. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, the hell is this? Yeah. So, yeah. It's a very long skit that had such build-up. This is why I love about it. It was such a build-up skit to nothing. <laughs> yeah. A lot of nothing. Yeah. And I was... Because I know, knew the bit that they were doing. I was seeing if Cody could figure it out. Because what it is is this... Um, it's almost like another anime where this guy kidnaps the king and is trying to steal these two ancient wooden block artifacts to power a weapon yeah. to take over the world, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> and you never clue in until unless you're paying attention and remember like one or two skits from the earlier episodes mm -hmm. where they brought this up, but the wooden blocks refer to the hair pit ties that uh, Mio wears. <laughs> yeah, I didn't notice that. And all this skit is is just Yuko imagining the power behind these hair ties and why they're so important. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, really? <laughs> really? Yeah, your your whole disappointment after you found it, this is all just a daydream. Nothing has happened. It's like, well, you disappoint me. Yeah. <laughs> and then we have the male teacher? Yeah. So the strict male teacher, who apparently likes plants, is in love with our uh, timid count, uh, counselor. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, the, the whole build-up to this, it's like, the whole, I can't have a new work relationship that's not professional. Yeah. But I wonder if she is sick. Yeah. Well, there's no harm in asking what her favorite food is. Does he ask her what her favorite no. food is? No. Hey, that? miss, what, are you... Do you have a boyfriend? No, um, I'm single. 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 <laughs> yep. I, I just like how... He opens the window for some reason. Yeah. Just to get a cool breeze of air to cool down. Yep, and then he has like a mental breakdown in the middle of the hall. Yep. As the principal's watch. <laughs> yep. He's not sure how to handle this, so he's just kind of there. Uh, yeah. You, you take a moment, and I'll be here if you need me. <laughs> yeah. Uh, at one point, I was like, "Go." Yeah. I, I, we can't go too far into your oh, joke, yeah. but <laughs> I can see like. After you just made that kind of blunder, you're like, yeah, just, just jump. Yeah. <laughs> and he wishes her luck. And she wishes him luck back. You know, that's the polite thing to do. Yeah. And he may have took that a little too... <laughs> uh, friendly like. Too friendly, yeah. But luckily nothing really comes of it at this moment. Yeah. <clears throat> Um, the interesting skit, I don't know if it was in this episode, but it was in one of the episodes we watched, is the elevator one. Might have been the second episode? I think it might have been the eighth episode we watched. Yeah. But they're trapped in an elevator. Yeah. And it just is so creepily surreal. Yeah, it it was real. It uh, gets unsettling. Yeah, at one point I was like, stop being creepy! Yeah. Like... This is one of those, it's uncomfortably long. It feels like it's longer than it is because of how uncomfortable it is. Yeah, it, it was like a horror. Yeah, it's a good take on a horror. And all it is is just them 
the three girls trapped in an elevator. This is so we don't need saying. Yeah. And then they start bursting into laughter. I forget, we were kind of talking, so we kind of missed what they said. But I don't, I can't imagine it wasn't anything too important. <laughs> no, um, I think they had a mental breakdown considering, um, Mio. Yeah. I think was slamming her head into the ground. Oh yeah, no, because that's a japanese where it's like, it's so funny that you just yeah. are in hysterics. But... It's like, uh, <laughs> hey, you guys enjoy your little mental breakdown. We'll get you out when you calm the hell down. The other thing I like, um, I don't know if it was in... Yeah, it was in the eighth episode. But we start the episode off with uh, Nano watering the garden. And then her arm shoots off. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. She does a stretch and then her arm rockets into the sky. And I love this show for doing uh, continued gags. Yep. So, uh, in one of the skits, they're out on the street talking, and then you just see Nana run by, like, wait! Get back here! <laughs> Yeah, that was hilarious. And then later, there's another skit with uh, the gun girl and the goat guy. Yeah, goat boy. And it wraps up, and then you just see the fist come flying in. And then... Bang. Yeah. Cut away. Uh, the two girls who are the friends of the gun girl are just like, So what do I do with this holding the arm? Yeah. <laughs> So, good job on, like, a continued joke that just... Oh, yeah. You didn't have to. Yeah. I, I, I would have just been fine with just the arm rocking it off and she <laughs> got it back, but these <laughs> subtle hints of how she gets it back are just world-building. Yep. Um, and then... There's an episode where Professor's stacking. Yep. And she does. Yeah. So the professor's like an eight-year-old girl. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Snacks are kind of her life. Oh, yeah. That's heavy. Yeah. This was a good joke. Yeah. So, um, Nano is angry at Hatsume for snacking before bed as it's bedtime. And he's like, well, now you gotta go brush your teeth again because you can't go to bed with food in your mouth. Yeah. And... Obviously, the eight-year-old girl does not want to brush her teeth a second time. Yep, and says, oh, you're a robot. You can't get that. And, and of that course, yeah, because, you know, the soft spot of Nano is she doesn't like the idea that she's a robot. She wants to be an ordinary person. So, um, <laughs> let's do the skip right, because I like that. It's like, um, Hatsume is... They did a good job of capturing how an eight-year-old reacts. Yeah. And even to the point where I believe I'm an eight-year-old. Because <laughs> <laughs> the way that she lies... Oh, yeah. yeah. It's like, looks away, it's like, yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was hilarious. Yeah. It's like, I'll st like to admit, apologize, or uh, try to apologize, it's like, you can get cavities? Are you sure? Oh uh, yeah, sure. <laughs> That's <laughs> way. Like you dirty liar. <laughs> and then she's like, "I promised to install a feature where you can get cavities to make up for the fact that she can't get cavities." Such the stupidest additions to robots. Yeah. Then again, it's like if you look at all the features That's Nano true. has, you're like, "A lot of these don't make any sense, and why?" <laughs> But then you gotta remember, her creator's an eight-year-old girl. That's true. At the time, it made a lot of sense. Oh, yeah. And then she forgot. <laughs> oh, yeah, I forgot your toes a USB stick. Yeah. Or that your hand can shoot out into a grappling hook. <laughs> or that your cake storage. Yeah. There's so many features to Nano yeah. I would like, love to see it run down of. <laughs> I, I imagine someone who's watched this show has done a com compilation of all the uh, gadgetry Nano has. Oh, yeah. 
Because I know someone did that for Inspector Gadget, so I can only oh, imagine God. Nano. <laughs> I think Nano is better than Inspector Gadget. <laughs> yeah, less, um... Incompetent? Less incompetent and... More adorable. Oh, yeah. Inspector Gadget is just a... Goofball. Yeah. Okay, um... So I'm going to ask the question now that we're nine episodes in. Which pairings do you like? Do you like uh, Mio, Yuko, and The Quiet Girl? Yeah. Or do you like uh, Nano and Hatsume and Sakamoto? I kind of like both, actually. You kind of like both, so you can't choose which one. No. They're both equally pretty damn funny. Although, I do kind of like Redhead Girl and uh, Goat Boy. Yeah, that's a nice little uh, side off. Yeah, because every time they get together, she shoots him. Yeah, <laughs> in some way or form. And I'm all for him getting shot. Chad <laughs> does not like the goat boy. <laughs> I have said this before. He is insufferable. Yeah, not to play therapist, but is there a specific reason? He is insufferable. <laughs> yeah, but why? Arrogant? Like, he doesn't come off that arrogant, but he's too laid back in his yeah. nobility. Too laid back and too over dramatic. Yes. Very dramatic, but very, like, he doesn't take anything seriously because he's noble and, like, everything will always work out for him in the end because of his nobility. So I can understand why people wouldn't like him for that, but yeah. at the same time, that's his charm. It's yeah, like, man. you can, like, punch this guy and he's just be like, alright, well, that's fine. Sometimes you got shot and just shrug that off. Yeah, exactly. And it's never his fault. <laughs> that's the other thing that makes him kind of arrogant. He's like, well, you clearly have an issue. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's like, you dropped litter. Yeah. I did no such, such thing. thing. This is clearly not litter. This is my handkerchief. It's actually surprising that you knew this was mine. <laughs> that got him shot that, big yeah. time. Yeah. Like, don't call attention to her stalking. Yeah. Well, she's supposed to be a Sundary type character. Okay. Yeah. She's violent towards him because she loves him that much. Oh, God! Yeah. But she can never confess that love. Just go to jail. Go to jail. Well, like, <laughs> it's fine. It's not as harmful as, like, a Yandere. <laughs> that can get scary. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah. Okay, uh, Mio's sister. Okay, yeah, let's talk about Mio's sister, because we get quite a bit of her in a couple of episodes. <laughs> yep. And Mio's sister is kind of a... Jerk? Jerk, yeah. <laughs> I was trying to find a p polite way to put this, but jerk is real work. Yeah. So Mio's sister likes to uh, play pranks all the freaking time. Oh, yeah. And even to, like, the huge expense at Mio. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. One episode, Nano was the victim. Yep. Stole her hand, didn't she? Yep. Like, uh, yeah, so Mio's sister finds Nano in the street and is fascinated by the key in her back, so she instinctively grabs the key. And Nano's like, can you not do that? And Mio's sister, of course, yep. keeps doing that. Yep. And then something happens and Nano's hand falls off. And Mio's sister takes it. Yeah, Mio's sister's like, Hi, I'm not giving this back until you explain how this happens. Yeah. And then it's like, well, now you gotta solve three quizzes. Ugh. First quiz, which hand does, has your hand in it? Your it, bag. Correct. <laughs> oh my god, oh my god. Second quiz is that long math problem that's like, ends with, where would your hand be? <laughs> it's like, it's in your bag. Correct again. <laughs> Yeah. 
Or just give her back the hand. Ends up giving her back the hand. Yeah. That takes the key out. Yep. Which actually is a blessing in disguise. Yeah. Because that is all Nano ever wants in life, is just have that key removed. Yeah. And then she <laughs> um... puts it back. Nano's in like such a state of happiness that she's froze. And then Mio's sister is like, um, puts the key back and walks, leaves. He's like, I may have killed this girl. I'm just going to put the evidence back and run away. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. And I'm like, I can't call you a jerk because technically you did steal the key. Yeah. Well, she just grabbed the key and it just came out. Oh, like, yeah. She wasn't like trying to yank it out. That's fair. <laughs> okay, and then... Yeah, more of Mio's sister messing with her sister. Yeah. The whole cake incident. Yep. Yeah. So, um, if you're not aware of the Japanese culture, is some stores only have a limited stock item. Oh, yeah. So, uh, one being this dessert is a cake, a shortcake. Only ten a day. Only from... ten a day are made. So, first ten people to get this cake, get it. Mm-hmm. And Mia's sister, or Mia, actually, sorry, manages to get a hold of one, and her sister puts a chess piece in it. Oh. For whatever gag, I can't even figure out the joke behind it. Yeah, I can't either. But here we are. Yeah. And apparently that's enough to ruin the cake. Yeah. But, or, it wasn't the cake, it was some other dessert first. Yeah. Yeah. There's a new, uh, frozen noodle dish. Oh, yeah. Then the shortcake. And... Strawberry. She took the strawberry. She freaked me a freak the hell out. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, the whole point of the shortcake is the strawberry. Uh, yeah, that's true. Other, other, otherwise, it's just... Cake. Shortcake. Yeah. And then... So she's absolutely dev. Mio is absolutely devastated yep. and crying on the floor as her sister then starts singing "Happy Birthday" to herself. To herself, which you're like, oh, did Mio forget her birthday? And this is kind of like a punishment. And then you find out it's not even the sister's birthday. No, <laughs> she's, just being a jerk. She's just being more of a jerk. <laughs> Got beat up by a. Rolled up newspaper. Yeah. Used as a kendo stick. <laughs> yup. <laughs> so, final Fox or final skits you want to talk about before we wrap up? I can't think of that. I think we covered it. We covered any. Um, the one I want to talk about is hey. the mom. <laughs> we meet Yuko's mom for the first time, and I love these. Because Yuko's mom is brutal. <laughs> Uh, yeah! <laughs> Yuko's uh, chasing mosquitoes. mosquitoes, just slapping her hands together, running all over the room, snapping her foot feet down. Yeah, and her mom comes in and just hauls off and slaps her across the face, flies her. She flies across the room. Into the dress, into the desk. And it's just there, basically laying out a whimper. Bed. Yep. <laughs> and I was like, as much as I don't condone like parenting child violence, the overdramatization of this just makes yeah. it right. And the fact that you have to understand the mom's point of view, where her daughter is kind of a idiot, except energetic idiot, not just an idiot. Oh yeah, she's energetic, so she has to deal with this on a daily. So she does have to put her foot down quite a bit and quite mm -hmm. forcefully to get it into Yuko. <laughs> yep. So. Fair. I can understand the mom's uh, brutality in that respect. Fair. I still don't believe hitting kids is right. Fair. But with that, though, I guess that'll be the episode. Yeah. I am looking forward to more of this. I don't even think we're near the halfway point. No. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm having fun. Yeah, this gets, show gets more fun as we go along. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. And a sign of good show is because then we can't figure out what skip belongs to what episode. Yeah, 
they all just kind of blur and mix together, so it's hard to keep track. And that's actually a good thing. Oh, yeah. Sometimes you don't want to remember them. No. <laughs> there are some where you're like, all right, well, that happened. I'm just going to move on with my day. Yeah. But that's a skit show in general. They're not all going to be winners. Yeah, that's fair. All right, with that, though, we'll call the episode here. So thank you all very much for watching. Tune in next time for more Nichigo. Peace out.